Hello everybody and welcome back. Let's talk about the problem sum of pairwise Hamming distance. So very interesting problem relying on one simple observation, just one single observation to convert the time complexity from order of n square to order of n. All right, let's get started with the solution. All right, before we get started with the solution, let's actually talk about the problem statement. We're given the list of integers as the input and the goal of this problem is to return a single integer value. That value is going to be the sum of pairwise Hamming distances between all of the integer values present in the input array. All right, but what does Hamming distance mean? Let's take an example to understand this better. Let's say we have the case of two and four. Now I'm going to ask you the question, can you find me the Hamming distance between the values two and four? How can we do that? It's very simple. We'll first convert both of these numbers into their binary representations. So two is zero, one, zero, and four is one, double, zero. Hamming distance simply says that count the number of bits that disagree. So if we look at the zeroth bit, both of them have zero, zero. So there is no disagreement. Then we have one zero, which is a disagreement. So we'll add one to the count. Then zero, one, again, another disagreement. Two is the final answer. So the Hamming distance between two and four is going to be two. Similarly, if you calculate the Hamming distance between six and four is going to be one because there is one total disagreement between the bits of six and four. Super simple. All right. So now that we know what Hamming distance is, let's actually talk about an example. This is a test case provided to us. And this is the test case of two comma four comma six. So the problem statement said that return me the sum of pairwise Hamming distances. So they are going to be uh, n square number of pairs and I've enumerated them here. So we'll first consider two with two, two with four, two with six and so on and so forth. Now this is the Hamming distance function, which we've already seen. Combine all of that and you will get the answer as eight. Pretty simple, nothing too special. But herein lies the biggest issue. If you notice the constraint of the question mentioned that the input array's size can be from 10 to the power four to 10 to the power five which means that an n square solution will not really work. Just for the sake of demonstration, I have this solution over here and I've computed the Hamming distance like this, where I iterate over all of the bits from zero to 32. And since I want to count the number of disagreements between two integers X and Y, I've simply taken their ZOR. So what this is doing is taking their ZOR and then I'm going to find what is the number of set bits in the ZOR value. This will tell me the number of disagreements and I'll simply return this at the count. This is the Hamming distance function. And now what we do is iterate over all of the values in A twice. So we have a X in A and then Y in A. And we have basically found out all the pairs, figure out the Hamming distance and add it to the answer. Pretty simple, but again, order of N squared. Not really going to work for our constraints, is it? We need something more uh, of the sort of maybe n log n or order of n. n square clearly won't work. So how do we go about this now? So we pretty much got stuck in a dead end. We got an order of n square solution, which was great as a brute force approach, but optimizing that wasn't easy. And even if you look at like a couple of more examples, write down uh, some test cases, try to find the pattern, it won't be exactly easy. So what do we do? Well, whenever you get stuck at this kind of dead end, I realize that it's a good way to just change your perspective, try to flip things around and see what you can make of it. What we had up till now was that we would take two integers here, write down their binary representations and then iterate over them one by one, bit by bit. But what if I write down all of these numbers in a single line? Let's say the numbers are super simple. Yeah. So we have one, one, zero, one, zero. These are all of the numbers I'll give you. Can we find the answer for this in an efficient way? Recall what Hamming distance is. Hamming distance simply says that, tell me the number of disagreements between the bits. All right. So is there a way to find out all of the disagreements quickly? All right, uh, let's take a step back. Let me ask you the question. When we look at this integer one, can you tell me how many values it disagrees with? Does one disagree with one? No, it agrees. Does one disagree with zero? Yes, it does. All right. Does one disagree with one? No. 
One disagree with zero? Yes. So one disagrees with two values. Similarly, if you realize this one disagreed with two values, this one will also disagree with two values. And even for this one. Now, if you flip things around, if I ask you the question for zero, how many values does zero disagree with? Zero will disagree with three values because there are three total ones. Yeah, so just for the sake of convenience, the number of values zeros is going to disagree with is just the number of months and vice versa. In other words, if we write it all down, so we have one disagreeing with two values, one with two, zero with three, one with two, zero with three. Yeah. What we can do is simply take a sum of all of these values. We did nothing special. We just counted the number of ones and zeros. And once we had that in mind, we could look at, okay, there are three number of ones and each of these ones is going to disagree with two amounts of zeros. So we just did two times three. And in the zero case, we did three times two. Finally, we added them together to get the answer as 12. Again, super simple, nothing special. We just counted the number of ones and zeros. Amazing, right? So what is the answer then? If you can count the number of ones and zeros, just return two times the number of ones times the number of zeros. Let's go back to our original example. This was a mess. Clearly, this was a mess. We have three integer values and we have to write down nine possible values, nine possible combinations to get the answer as eight. Can we do it quickly now? Can we do it quickly now? We'll again go ahead and write down their binary representations. And this time, we'll iterate bit by bit again, but not pairwise anymore. Yeah, we've, we've written down every single possible number and its binary representation. In this case, it's only three, but you get the point. All right, so we'll go and look at the first bit, which is the zeroth bit. And this says that, okay, there are three number of zeros. And so we'll write three over here, zero number of ones. So we'll multiply it with zero and then multiply it with two because that it was our formulation. Yeah, it was two times the number of ones times the number of zeros. Cool. So we get zero over here. We'll put it as the answer. Then we'll move on to the next bit. Here we have two number of ones and one number of zero. So we have two times one and then into two for all, giving us four and so we'll store four. Take a prediction, take a guess of what's going to happen in the next iteration. We're going to go over this bit, look at the number of ones, look at the number of zeros and multiply them together. So we have two times one times two. We get four here and so the final answer is eight. What did we see before? What was the answer in this case? The answer was eight. And so in these three iterations, each of, you know, iterating over all the n values, we were able to find the answer. We found an order of n solution. The number of bits times n is the total time complexity of our solution. The number of bits will not exceed 31 or 32. So it's just 31 times n or order of n in total. We found an optimized solution. Now, enough talking. Let me actually show you with code. All right. So let's actually code this solution up. Uh, initially, we had this Hamming distance, which we are computing for two integers, which we won't need anymore because we found a better way to do it. We also had this order of n square solution because of this loop, which we'll remove. What were we actually doing? Well, the first thing which we were doing was iterating over all the possible bits. So I'm going to iterate from i equals to 0 to i equals to 32. Each of the times, I'm going to look at uh, all of the integer values. And I'm going to tell, I'm going to ask the question, is the ith bit set or not? This looks something like this, when I'm going to take one bit shifted by i and it with x. And now if this is true, then the number of ones increases by one. Else, number of zeros increases. Cool. So we just count the number of ones and the number of zeros at the ith position. Nothing special. All right. We'll also set these variables up. So we'll have long, long int as number of ones, which is going to be starting from zero and we'll copy paste it for number of zeros. Cool. Well, pretty simple up till now. Then we'll uh, multiply the number of ones with the number of zeros with two. 
take the mod of it because uh, this can easily overflow. So we'll have the mod. And now I'm going to add this entire value to the answer. So answer equals to answer plus this entire big value. Again, mod because this can again overflow. Cool. Um, I think we're pretty much set. So let's actually test this out. Cool, looks good. We'll submit this. And we're done. So anyways, this is it for the solution to the problem, sum of pairwise Hamming distance. And as always, thank you so much for watching.